वेलकम 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 टू माई सेकेंड वेबिनार एज यू नो माई नेम सॉरीन एंड टूडे आई शेल शो यू वॉट्स गोइंग ऑन इन द माइक्रो वर्ल्ड बिफोर वी स्टार्ट मेक श्योर टू वॉच माई प्रीवियस वेबिनार रिकॉर्डिंग द लिंक इज इन द डिस्क्रिप्शन प्लीज वॉच द प्रीवियस वेबिनार रिकॉर्डिंग इन ऑर्डर टू यू नो डेवलप इंटरेस्ट एज वेल एज टू गेट मोर कॉन्टेक्स्ट अबाउट थिंग्स द रूल्स फॉर द वेबिनार एज वेल एज सम लिंक्स आर इन द पिंट कॉमेंट एज वेल एज द लाइव चैट एंड द वीडियो डिस्क्रिप्शन all right to show support you can type something in the live chat as you guys know so let's start now if we are studying the micro world we should know what it refers to in this case it refers to the world of invertebrates or invertebrates as i like to call them so before studying invertebrates of course we should know what they are invertebrates are animals lacking bones in their bodies which means any animal without bones is an invertebrate for more context things like insects arachnids myriapods uh, mollusks nidarians and annelids are some examples of invertebrates invertebrates or invertebrates are very abundant on planet earth existing in the trillions they are so diverse aren't they all species of invertebrates in my opinion are incredible and worth learning about There are over 1.4 million species to learn about, but why don't people uh, study them? We should first now get to studying invertebrates. I have contacted many experts about some tips about studying invertebrates, but there aren't a lot of people who actually study them. Why not? Well, this is because humans tend to dislike these critters. The world of invertebrates is kind of disregarded by people. due to misinformation and myths this leads to very little information being taught about them hence this leads to people not having interest about them so for a better in depth look at this topic i highly suggest to watch my previous webinar recording after this one people also don't want to understand their importance they don't even know how important invertebrates are not only to nature but also to us and yes they are important we'll get to that a bit later So now that we know why people don't want to study invertebrates why should you learn about them like are you even interested invertebrates are important for many reasons first off they are important to ecosystems as they've been a part of major ecosystems since complex life even began some of them are sitting at the bottom of the food chain while some are close to the top as a result they can even be important to us believe it or not they open a whole new niche to learn about and are also very useful for instance farmers use earthworms to nourish the soil mantis shrimp appendages are being used to study and make shields and other weapons and bees are excellent pollinators invertebrates also have a ton of other uses also most ecosystems tend to have an impact on us in the long run for studying invertebrates there is lots to learn when studying them you're basically doing science biology to be precise you can even make scientific discoveries based on your learnings i might have possibly made one myself it just needs to be confirmed though now i will show you guys how to make these discoveries so how can i learn more about invertebrates well first you need to become interested in them again i highly suggest you watch my previous webinar recording if you haven't yet because it shows you how to like invertebrates and which will automatically help you develop interest you can study invertebrates basically any time and anywhere invertebrates are found on every single continent no exceptions here and different species are out during different times of the day with a bit of research you can find out what creature you want to investigate more about and take it from there There are multiple methods to study invertebrates some requiring going out in the field and some for indoorsy people So now let's get to studying the micro world here are ways to study about invertebrates Reading is a good method I highly recommend reading as the first thing to do before going out in the field if you decide to do that Reading about invertebrates can really help boost your knowledge about them and is an easy way to learn from the safety of your own home Not that most invertebrates are dangerous anyway. Learning facts and looking at pictures and or diagrams will help you better identify and be educated about the creatures you might find. So, where can I read more about them? Reading books and online articles are the way to go. I myself have some books 
related to invertebrates containing true invertebrate information and i'm constantly reading articles from national geographic about what's going on in the micro world okay now we come to one of my favorite methods observation as i explained invertebrates are found all over the world and you can learn so much from watching you wouldn't believe that some critters might be in or around your house and some might be hidden in places like you know rivers forests oceans on trees and other places there are multiple species of invertebrate you can spot in the micro world for example insects spiders centipedes and sometimes crabs snails octopuses starfish and sometimes even coral you just need to know where to look your invertebrate school is everywhere some of the methods to observe invertebrates are taking photos and videos about what you found you can do this with a phone and or a camera identifying what you found is also good it can help you better find out the species and and you know what are its uh, lifestyle and behavior and stuff like that and identifying an invertebrate can help you because you might have discovered a new species some species or a new geographic location how cool is that you can also take notes about what you've discovered you also need some sort of equipment in order to observe invertebrates better and here are some of them you can use a magnifying glass you know to better identify them you can use a phone to click pictures you can have a notebook with you in order to make notes and you can have a field guide to better identify your invertebrate i will explain the need for all of these in depth in a future video or just in the q and a session of the webinar okay now we come to photography how will this help studying invertebrates you may ask photography and documentation has few minor benefits for example it helps better identify your creature i already explained why it's important to identify an invertebrate which you spot so you can use stuff like insect identifying apps or something like that in order to identify your invertebrate one more benefit of photography is helping biologists with your discoveries because it gives definite proof so as to what you've observed be it a new species a new behavior or something else you're contributing to science whilst doing so just keep that in mind photography can also be done for fun i have collected multiple photos of insects and spiders and other invertebrates and i also love to document their lifestyle and behavior and here are things which you can document first is behavior next are incredible moments like a butterfly emerging from its pupa or a spider molting this is something which might take a bit more effort you can also document your observations and lots of other stuff photography and documentation of invertebrates also helps others learn about them that's one of the reasons i have this youtube channel related to invertebrates and biology you might also need to invest in something like a macro lens for your phone or like you know a dslr or something as well as professional lighting in order to click photographs the next study method is experimentation it better helps identify the lifestyle and behavior of invertebrates some invertebrates even have particular idiosyncrasies but what is an experiment here is the experimental method well you can learn more about invertebrates by observing them first making a hypothesis based on your observations testing out your hypothesis and taking note of your conclusion in fact this channel abse stands for audience biological science experiments experiments are a great way of contributing to science and tipping your hat off to it and can even help make potential scientific discoveries that's pretty cool did you know that invertebrates can be pets although unusual to most people tens of thousands of humans actually keep invertebrates that includes me keeping them is kind of like an all in one method to study about invertebrates because of low maintenance to keep them and you can observe them for much longer and better conduct experiments i am not talking about harmful experiments here photography and documentation also gets much better as now you can click from more angles and set up sufficient lighting at home it's also a super cool experience to keep a critter like you know an insect like a mantid ant beetle and much more you can keep stuff like spiders earthworms centipedes and lots of other invertebrates 
keeping invertebrates is just a bonus thing and only if you're hardcore enough to do so. Okay, now I highly recommend this method, doing more research. It will really help broaden your knowledge about the micro world. You can go on nature trails to spot some critters. You can learn to get information from reading more. You can learn to use a field guide in order to identify invertebrates much more. You can get in touch with experts. I am in touch with many experts who, by the way, fact checked this PPT. You can learn to learn from multiple sources because if you learn from one source, it will really make your information very narrowed down. Learning from multiple sources also helps you better have a conclusion about things and will help you learn much, much more. You can observe invertebrates more as well as probably even going hardcore so as to like for example get a job related to invertebrates or other animals. I want to do this thing only if you are hardcore enough to do so. Invertebrates believe it or not can also be studied online. How you may ask? Here's how. Reading online articles to know ecological events or invertebrate discoveries is good. It's a method of reading of course. To better identify invertebrates with like notes or photographs, you can go to identification websites like spideridentify.com and bugguide.net. Species on these websites are well catalogued with good information about the invertebrate. Who knows, maybe even you might get to document a species. Blogs and forums are interactive ways to study invertebrates online. I highly recommend this forum called arachnoboards.com, the link is in the description, to discuss our topics, micro world related. My own website also has a chat box from which you can type questions to other members of it. You can also email me on my email address, check the description to ask any questions or send me any pictures, you know, artwork for my wall and video clips. Emailing professional zoologists will also help clear your questions. I am personally in touch with a few myself. You can watch educational invertebrate videos on YouTube and you can go to my website to learn more. All these links by the way are in the description of the video. If you are on the phone, you will find like a drop down menu next to all the controls and if you are on the PC, just scroll down. Invertebrates can be studied on social media as well. YouTube and Facebook have many educational and tutorial videos related to invertebrate concepts. Facebook groups are interactive and can help you post questions, answers and pictures on these groups. When you watch invertebrate videos, watch relevant channels which do not spread misinformation. Some examples of this are Ants Canada, Deep Look, ABSE which I own by the way, you can go and subscribe to these. And you can also post your own pictures and videos on YouTube, Facebook or Instagram and other sites to help other people learn more about the disregarded world of invertebrates. Related to this, let's come to my experience with invertebrates. This background noise is really getting on my head now. Regardless, I have implemented all of these tips into my research arsenal and it's time to show you what I have created. First is my YouTube channel on which you are watching this webinar right now. It has more than 380 subscribers and more than 100 invertebrate videos which are very educational. I also have an entire documentary series about invertebrates called Inverts for Dummies. Uh, this is for like you know people who want to learn more about invertebrates as beginners. You can check these links in the description by the way. So you can go subscribe. You are also showing your support for the disregarded micro world by subscribing to ABSE and if you turn on notifications on as well, you'll be notified for future uploads. So go subscribe. I also have an Instagram account and you can follow me on that for like updates and photographs. Regardless, how have I created all of this you may ask? What's my experience with invertebrates? How much do I personally know? Well, this slide may explain that. So, of course, I'm very interested in invertebrates, invertebrate biology. I started studying more uh, about invertebrates around three years ago, like in 2018 or 2017. I have gotten in touch with experts on the field of invertebrate zoology, like the famous lepidopterist Dr. Isaac Kehinkor, also known as the butterfly man, and a lot of other people. Invertebrates weren't hostile to these experts, nor to me, and actually won't be to anyone. That's a great way of learning about invertebrates. That's one of the tips. Regardless, 
There are lots of incredible moments I witnessed and documented for my YouTube channel and you can check out my top picks in the playlist in the description. So yeah, I also want to pursue invertebrate zoology as a career which will be epic. Now do you have any questions? You can ask them right now. You can post these questions in the live chat and yes, only subscribers can post questions. I have unlocked subscribers only more. So uh, fire away with your questions, I'll answer them. Okay, I, I got a question over here, why do we need containers? Very good question, Jason Zarachnitz. So we need containers in order to better observe and identify invertebrates because you can first of all click them from way more angles, especially if your container is like, you know, transparent or something. And yeah, overall it's better because it helps you film in a controlled location and other benefits. Any other questions? Okay, where do I get my containers from? So sometimes what I do is I buy them online like these containers for example and some of the containers uh, I've actually recycled from like you know old food containers and things like that like you know this and yeah so I have lots of types of containers like I have a container which has like a magnifying glass lens as a lid to better spot invertebrates which was gifted to me by the way okay please share names of fiction and non-fiction books related to this topic okay so some non-fiction books you can get are you know field guides to better identify invertebrates you can get this awesome book called life changing by helen pilcher it's non-fiction i don't know of any fiction books which can help you learn more about invertebrates so yeah okay precautions to take when they are poisonous okay if an invertebrate is poisonous remember uh, poison is a sort of chemical which will only affect you if you try and eat the creature if the creature bites you or something and if you get affected it's venomous not poisonous that's the difference between poison and venom and yeah if it's poisonous just don't lick it and don't eat it anything on leeches not quiet no i haven't read this book the secret life on bees i will probably read this book later on Okay, any other questions? For humans in general, more appealing creatures are considered safe and worth to look at. This is one of the reasons majority of the population does not fancy invertebrates. You can correct me if I'm wrong. So actually most species of invertebrates are completely harmless to us. We just are filled with misinformation in our heads about these creatures because you know someone must have told you that they might uh, kill you or you know go into your ears but most of those are just myths and because of myths lots of misinformation spreads and as a result people don't know that most invertebrates are actually harmless and cannot do anything to you. Okay wait I've got a question how to study ants. So basically you can study ants by first of all finding an individual ant and you can trace it back because ants live in colonies and they will eventually go back to the colony after foraging for things like food and stuff and yeah so you follow the ant to its colony you can even document it on the way and you can learn about their behavior their hunting lifestyle their aggression etc have i bred butterflies and moths actually no uh, i haven't bred them but i've actually raised a couple of butterflies and moths uh, on my channel I've actually made a video on the life cycle of a butterfly and yeah I had raised like 10 caterpillars for that and for the life cycle of a moth I have an upcoming video soon okay what are your thoughts on dissection of smaller creatures in school how can we make it more humane <laughs> dissection in any way in my opinion will not be humane and 
probably in my opinion dissection can be made more humane by not using live animals you know using dead creatures and things like that and although disgusting to some people dissection can really help you learn more about the creature you are dissecting i was actually thinking of observing a spider i'm not sure on how to manage it so well for most species of spider it's very easy to observe them like for example for some spiders you know they are just staying put in their webs which means you can observe it for example catching a prey which has landed in the web things like that you can document it you can identify it you can take notes then there are other spiders which are characterized as the hunting spiders you know which wander around to catch prey some examples of these are jumping spiders and wolf spiders they are very very inquisitive and yeah it's very fun to observe them i actually keep a jumping spider as a pet so yeah it's very fun to observe spiders okay do i have any creatures to show us of course wait all right so over here i've got my jumping spider yeah you see her over here this brown yeah uh the species of jumping spider is plexippus spicoli then over here i've got a centipede it is in its burrow yeah you can kind of see its legs right like over here yeah then i have another centipede i don't know if it's outside wait let me check yeah it's kind of outside oh it went back in it went in its burrow yeah most of my creatures are nocturnal and will be outside at night oh yeah i also yeah. have this over here this is my terrarium full of snails the snails are also nocturnal but you can see a couple which are outside over here i have a group of orb weaver spiders as well as sheath web spiders and yeah okay what are hammerhead worms and where are they found so hammerhead worms are very interesting kinds of worms they are mainly carnivorous they hunt uh like what they say they hunt like insect larvae and things like that and yeah they're pretty cool they are named after their hammerhead shape for you know their heads and they come in lots of colors i earlier used to own a hammerhead worm and i've also seen one which has like blue stripes that was pretty cool yeah thank you for your feedback okay what are my thoughts on centipedes so one of my thoughts on centipedes are first of all they are nocturnal most species are nocturnal which means they will be awake at night and that also means that in the morning they hide in the darkness at night what centipedes do is they come out of their burrows and they will start hunting for prey and looking for them at night it's really cool to spot them and centipedes come in all sorts of sizes so very cool to observe i've i've also spotted a species of spider called an indian tiger centipede which has the coloration of tigers you know orange and black and yeah centipedes are carnivorous okay any other questions what do i record videos with okay uh, what do i record videos with so first i use this iphone se over here i use this ipad as well to record videos and yeah that's practically it this webinar is being recorded on a macbook over here okay yeah thank you thank you for trying to keep a jumping spider here's uh, here's some tips which i'll give So jumping spiders like to wander around a lot in their enclosure they're very inquisitive and you can set up like a kind of large enclosure for them like over here you see the size of the spider compared to the enclosure this is for the larger species for the smaller species i use like something like this this jar so yeah it's very nice for the spider to wander around you see she's right here yeah pretty cool And yeah jumping spiders are really cool pets they're really inquisitive and I love them And in order to feed jumping spiders you might have to use things like flies and other spiders and other sorts of insects and invertebrates because all spiders are carnivorous Jumping spiders hunt by sight by the way so they will have their eyes locked on a target and yeah so you have to show the target to them and then they'll just pounce on it Pretty cool that's why they're called jumping spiders because they jump around each move of the ours is calculated which means jumping spiders are really good at mathematics and they are really intelligent as well for a spider 
are there any good parks or places in your cities to explore these actually almost any park or any place is good to find invertebrates because as i said invertebrates live on every continent even antarctica and the arctic circle that's pretty cool and hence you will find invertebrates everywhere if you look very closely for example if i go to like a garden or something i can look underneath rocks on trees in the grass and other areas and if i'm in a jungle again almost the same places just a couple more and invertebrates are also found in rivers and things like that like for example you have uh, water boatman beetles and you have water spiders which which stride on the water you have water striders and other things invertebrates are basically omnipresent yeah correct correct what are the benefits of spiders like benefits as in like how are they useful to us or something or what do you mean by this question could you rephrase this okay benefits of spiders in an ecosystem so well all spiders are hunters which means they'll be somewhat high in the food chain as the ecosystems they are part of spiders of course they have predators like you know birds other spiders sometimes ants and yeah other creatures the the larger spiders are mainly at the top of the food chain like for example uh, tarantulas or wandering spiders because they are able to hunt larger rodents whereas the smaller spiders i mean uh, the only thing below them are like you know small insects and stuff like that so all in all yeah spiders are kind of good to ecosystems at the start of the webinar you stated invertebrates are found in every single continent no exceptions true no exceptions how many species of invertebrates are there at the start of the webinar i mentioned this so let me say it again there are more than 1.4 million invertebrate species which have been discovered until now like there are lots of undiscovered species and with using the tips of studying invertebrates you might possibly make a discovery yourself pretty cool yes invertebrates even live in antarctica there is a certain species of cricket which is adapted to living in the antarctic the antarctic how do invertebrates rank in terms of pets well that's a nice question i had actually watched a video related to this before and that video basically had the same opinions as i did in my opinion uh, invertebrates are not the best pets but they are like the second best pets at first you have reptiles because they are a bit more inquisitive and things like that next is invertebrates because they are very low maintenance to keep and some are fun to observe there is a lot of diversity and other stuff then below invertebrates i might probably put uh, fish below fish i might put amphibians below amphibians i will put uh, birds and mammals because birds and mammals are like very uh, what do we say high maintenance invertebrates are low maintenance okay thank you for thank you for your feedback thank you for your feedback I have a question to you guys uh, will you be implementing tips so as to learn about invertebrates like i'm not talking about going hardcore or anything i'm just saying like will you be uh, more inquisitive about the micro world and things like that okay what's my favorite species of spider someone has asked uh <laughs> that's a tough question uh one of my favorite uh, spiders is the electric blue tarantula aka kilobrachis species electric blue because of its electric blue legs on its underside uh then some of them might also include peacock spiders uh there is a new species of peacock spider which got discovered maratus nemo uh because it's named because it's named after its uh, clownfish like coloration which the fish nemo also possesses thank you the passion for them is contagious i really like the way you guys are framing sentences here and you're welcome for this lovely session can insects feel emotions can they be emotionally attached to someone actually no uh they can't because they don't have uh, the best vision which means they can hardly even recognize your face insects actually have very primitive eyes called compound eyes which are made of several thousand lenses and all of and the vision of insects is their eyes all their lenses which are in the eyes they the images from the lenses they combine together create a very distorted image although it's great mantises have one of the best visions of any other insect but they cannot really recognize you like you know like a dog or a reptile might so yeah 
insects can feel certain emotions yeah like for example ants they grieve oh, they kind of grieve over uh, dead members of their colony uh, and then you know they dispose of their dead as well did you know that in order to prevent infection and things like that uh, going around the colony like let's say an ant died of infection the infection shouldn't spread throughout the colony right so yeah they can kind of feel emotions which are completely different from human emotions and mostly they just uh, they are like observation pets like you know like a fish or something can i be spider man if i get bitten by a spider <laughs> no <laughs> that's just fiction if you get bitten by a spider the spider just injects venom into your body most spider venom is like non lethal to us and most spiders can't even inject venom into our bodies because their fangs are way too small spider venom is mainly designed to paralyze stuff like insects and stuff not not humans and yeah their fangs are also designed for penetrating insects and stuff not humans have i caught a mantis yes twice so my first mantis i had caught uh, like when i had gone to a space observatory as i said invertebrates are everywhere i found the mantis at the space observatory it was like this small i have a video about this mantis you can check on my channel it was like from early 2021 the mantis is dead now due to old age uh, it was a male mantis and males don't live that long and i had caught one more mantis as well on my birthday actually that was pretty cool it was around this large like a good like you know those typical green mantises yeah it's currently dead sadly and one thing which you guys should know about mantises uh i have made like like three or four videos about mantises on my channel like about how mantises hunt can mantises catch animations of insects and also mantises are like they come in all sorts of colors yeah and the sad thing about mantises is they they don't live that long they are, they only live for like one or two years okay someone has personally messaged me i have lost some of my invertebrates yeah uh, which ones do i miss the most probably the mantis yeah it was pretty sad life expectancy of a moth it actually depends because some species of moths live for barely a few days some live for weeks or like a month at maximum they are caterpillars live a bit longer but the adult moth mainly their only purpose is to mate and reproduce right and after that they just die off and also you know due to winter and stuff in other countries they just die off thank you yeah it is super cool is catching a mantis hard depends first of all mantises are really good at camouflage which means you have to spot them very well and second yeah mantises don't they're not like very fast or something so they are easy to catch if you spot one i have one more question to you guys are you guys enjoying this webinar so far okay someone has asked me is there a recording link for this webinar yes there is if you want to view this webinar later you can just copy the link to this existing thing like for example over here you know you just copy the link over here and yeah you can you can watch the webinar and if you go on the channel uh, you know if you just click on my channel you'll manage to see my webinar recording later on because after this live stream ends it's basically like a normal video which you guys are watching what sparked the fire of my interest in invertebrates sadly i don't even know the answer uh, but if i were to hypothesize like i know a bit of the evidence uh i was interested in biology since a very young age and yeah things like these uh, creatures really intrigued me i wanted to learn more about them and then i found out that invertebrates can make really cool pets after more videos about them got suggested to me on youtube around 3 years ago and hence around 3 years ago i started doing more research on invertebrates yeah i will share it with my friends if they have interest in this topic yeah i'll also share it with the biologists uh who i'm in touch with so yeah Okay I have a question uh which I got over here how are mantis shrimp useful and what's my favorite species of invertebrate so mantis shrimp can be useful to people uh for uh, you know building weapons and shields you know why because uh, mantis shrimp they are actually excellent hunters some of the mantis shrimp they have uh, very strong appendages at the front of their bodies which they use to club their prey like they shoot their legs 
at the prey like they kind of punch the prey like very very fast and uh, yeah that can be used to make advanced weapons because matter shrimp are even capable of punching through glass yeah and the next thing how come their legs don't break because of the structural integrity of their uh, exoskeletons so if scientists take a look at their exoskeletons underneath a microscope you'll manage to see uh, those structures which make them strong enough and that can be used to make protective things like shields and yeah my uh, favorite uh, invertebrate that's the mantis shrimp because mantis shrimp not only are they super beautiful they also have cool abilities okay fine uh, now i'll proceed to end this webinar so i hope you guys enjoyed this webinar thank you all for showing your support for the world of invertebrates as well as to me by attending it uh it i hope it was a very productive sunday morning for you and yeah so in order to show more support you can type some feedback in the live chat and the comment section after the video has ended and yeah you can even email me some feedback you can also show some positive feedback by subscribing to the channel and sharing the link to the webinar regardless this is abse signing out so take care and goodbye